Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a fun card project that features gold embossing powder and Prismacolored pencils. Many years ago, my parents bought a beautiful desk from Japan, and it had all of this beautiful Asian artwork on it. And all of the artwork were images that were outlined in gold and then colored in with bright, vibrant color. So I was playing around with the New Hearts and Flowers Stamp TV kit, and I came across an idea that reminded me a lot of that desk, and I want to show it to you today. Let me show you the tools and products you need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some ink, and the ink that I'm using is the Versamark ink because I'm going to be doing some embossing. For embossing powder, I'm using the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Embossing Powder. I also have an embossing magic pad, and I just keep mine in this little jar, and this way the dust just kind of falls into the jar and it doesn't get all over my drawer. I also have the iPoint Orbit uh, pencil sharpener. I have an electric version of this, but that one is at home. This one I picked up because it operates on battery, and I like that for when I'm traveling and I don't necessarily have an outlet close by. And I'll link this one to the bottom of the screen at Stamp TV and also on YouTube. Now I have a variety of Prismacolor pencils here, and I want to just show you a couple things by coloring on some cardstock with these. I'm not going to use all of these colors today. For cardstock, I'm going to be using some of the Wild Wisteria, some of the Gina K Designs Layering Weight White, and some of the Black Onyx. I also have a little mono sand eraser, and I like to use that just in case I get an, a speck of embossing powder that's already embossed and I can't just brush it away. I like to use this because I can just kind of erase the embossing powder right off. I also have a Thermoweb tape runner, and then I have an acrylic block. Now I also am going to be using my mini Misty today. My original Misty is already packed in my bag and ready to leave for CHA so I'm uh, using the mini today for this and it's just the perfect size for this project. For stamps I'm using both the Tropical Blooms and the You Have My Heart stamp set from the new Stamp TV kit and I've already taken off the flower image and I've put it on my mini Misty. Now I'm going to start with a piece of black cardstock and I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and rub all over the surface of this. Now if you try doing this and you seem to have leftover embossing magic on your cardstock once your project is finished, you can rub a Swiffer, um, you know, one of those Swiffer cloths, dust cloths over it and it will pick up anything that's still stuck and left behind. All right, I'm going to grab my Versamark pad. I'm going to ink up this stamp real well with some Versamark. And I was playing with this last night, and I actually didn't clean the stamp. So I'm hoping for the best here that it stamps well, even though it wasn't cleaned and it was left out to dry overnight. So we'll see what happens. All right. And then I want to put a lot of pressure on that. Make sure I get a good contact with the paper. Oh, that looks like it's stuck pretty well. And my image looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and I have just a piece of scrap paper that I folded. I'm going to grab that gold detail embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle that all over my image. And that is looking pretty good. Okay, let me move this out of the way because I'm going to emboss a greeting afterwards. I'm going to grab my heat tool and just heat it up for a second. I like to heat it up just for a second or two first so that the embossing powder melts very quickly without warping the paper too much. Okay, you can see how quickly that's melting now because the heat tool had a chance to heat up first. I didn't get too much warping there. All right. So there you can see how nice and shiny that is. Okay. Now I'm going to pick an image, uh, or greeting rather. And I think I'm going to choose the greeting, You Have My Heart. On my other sample that I'm going to show you in a different color, I used 
the greeting that says, I love everything about you. And once again, I have a huge block here, which I really don't need this big of a block, but all of my little acrylic blocks are already packed away in my CHA bag, so I didn't want to forget them by taking them out and then inadvertently not remembering to put them back in. So we'll use a big block today, and that will be just fine. Okay, so then I'm going to stamp that just down here at the bottom of the paper. And then I'm going to put some embossing powder over that. And that is ready. Okay. And that heat tool should still be nice and hot. So I'll just emboss that right away and get the greeting on there. When I'm doing a project like this with a lot of coloring, I like to actually put the greeting on first, just in case I do something bad with the greeting or I smudge it in some way. Um, I don't have to worry about wasting all that beautiful coloring and all the time that it takes to color an image. Okay, so now I'm going to get this embossing powder out of the way and I'm going to begin to color. Now I want to show you a couple things here. I have um, a little piece of black paper here. I would try different colored pencils first before you actually start coloring your image. And the reason I would do that is, here's an example. I really wanted to use this aquamarine color. And I started coloring it right on the black, and it was okay. But then I picked up the light aqua, and I started coloring it. And you can see how much more vibrant that is on the black. And it actually looks more like the aquamarine color that I was going for, because it's actually being colored over black cardstock instead of on white cardstock. Now if I had my heart set on this darker color, then what I would do is take a white pencil and I would lay some white down first and then I could go and color this color on top and you can see how much more vibrant that one looks over the white than it does just straight onto the black. So you really kind of have to test your pencils out first on this black cardstock before you decide what color you want to use. Now since I'm going to use the Wild Wisteria cardstock, the lightest purple that I could find that looked pretty good really doesn't match. I don't think that's a good match at all. The color that matches pretty well is the Imperial Violet. And so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to lay down that white first and then color the Imperial Violet on top. And you can see that that is a much more vibrant color and it does look a lot better with the Wild Wisteria. So that means that I'm going to have to actually color this image twice with both of these pencils. Now I am going to grab this green. This is a good green without coloring white underneath and I'm going to color my leaves using this green. I always keep my pencil sharpener close by because it really is good to have a very sharp point when you get started. Now for coloring this I want to make sure I leave some of the black so I'm not trying to color the whole thing in. I'm trying to color just kind of in a in a can you see like the streak motion that I'm doing here? I actually want those streaky lines to be in there. I want it to look feathery, like that. And then I'm gonna go back over it with that purple pencil. So you can see the purple in there. but I'm still leaving a decent amount of black. And that's gonna be kind of my blend. So if, basically you're just kind of file, following along with the shape of the petal. I'm gonna do all of the petals first in white. And I'm not pushing really hard because I don't wanna kind of get too much wax on there. I just want to lightly color with the white just to get some white to lay down on there. 
if you get too much wax on there it's hard to get the other color to lay down nicely on top of it so just use a light hand and you can go back and forth a few times to lay down as much color as you want just don't press super hard so you can see I'm just following along with the shape of the design and I'm not taking it all the way to the top of each petal And I'm going to keep going through all of these petals. I'm going to color this whole thing and I'm not going to speed it up. So if you get tired of watching me do this, you can always zip ahead. But it really won't take very long to lay down this first color. And what's fun about this is it really starts to look like it's shaded because you're leaving a lot of that black in there. So now I'm going to go back over it again with the purple. And it's kind of fun because you can also see some of the white streaks in there, which make it look really multi-toned. Hold it up in a minute here so you guys can see it a little better. I don't know if it's like a stained glass look or what it is, but it definitely has that Asian art influence that I just adore. My dad was a, a big fan of that kind of art, and so he and my mom ordered this desk. They did a special order and it was an original. There were only, I think the artist had only painted five of them and each one of them was different. And my parents had one, absolutely beautiful. And I think this looks so much different than some of the other art that you see out there where the color of the embossing powder is white. The, the gold just gives it such vibrance. Okay, so that's one flower. I'm going to quickly color these. And again, just following along with the way the flower goes. And just leaving some of that black at the top of each petal. Some of them are really hard to do that. I mean, they're very small, so you may not even get much color in there. But if you can get a little bit in there, it'll just make the purple a little more vibrant. You'll still be able to see it if you don't have the white there, but it's just not quite as vibrant as when the white is laid down first. I haven't tried this yet with silver, but I bet with silver it would be beautiful too. But there's something about the gold that's just so beautiful. All right, and one more little spot here. And then we'll be done with the purple and we can move on to the leaves. Now with the leaves, that color that I showed you for the leaves, that doesn't really need any white underneath. So you can do that one all in one pass. Okay, so there's that purple. Now I'm going to grab this and just color in between each of these gold lines, leaving a little bit of black showing. This is a nice minty green. The color of this green, if you're interested, is called true green. It has a nice little mint color to it and that's a nice uh, it's a nice light green so it really pops on the black so you can see that green in there add a little in these and same thing on the rest of these you can see it doesn't take very long to do but it it really is just such an interesting look. It's so different than any of the other coloring techniques that I've seen. I'm 
The last time I colored this on our Facebook Live, I forgot about this leaf. I don't know how that happened. Okay. And so there's all of that coloring. Now let's see what this looks like when we add it to the card base. But before we do, and especially because this embossing powder goes off the edge, I need to have a piece of gold cardstock that's going to perfectly match that. I'm going to use my sweater here just to remove any of that embossing magic there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece of white cardstock. This piece is three and three quarters by five inches. This one is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And what I'm going to do with this one is, since I want it to match perfectly, I'm going to grab my Versamark pad and I'm just going to add some ink right around the perimeter. And you can do this with any of your embossing powder colors to match your embossing. Just going to add a little bit of that ink around the perimeter. And I'm going to grab this piece again and that gold embossing powder. I'm holding it more in the center. I'm going to add some of that around the perimeter of this piece of cardstock. And it doesn't have to be pretty or fancy because most of it's going to get hidden. It's just going to be that little gold perimeter left around the outside. And I'm going to heat emboss this using my heat tool. And again, it's good to just let that heat tool heat up for just a minute. I'm going to put my lid on my Versamark pad. And then I'm going to start to emboss that. And you can see now, because the gun is hot, how quickly that's changing over. And even though this is fine detail powder, it's still nice and smooth. If you see any tiny little bubbles in it, just kind of heat over it again and those will melt down. There we go. So now I have my gold piece of cardstock. So now I'm going to use my Thermoweb tape runner, and I like this because it's got the sticky little dots. And I'm going to give this an extra little bit of tape in the center, just because whenever it's heat embossed, I always feel like it just needs to really be flattened out just a little bit. And I'm going to lay that down on top. And now you can see that the gold embossing just fades right into that gold border. And now I'm going to adhere this piece onto my Wild Wisteria card base that I made earlier. And hopefully those purples pick each other up and you can see that beautiful glow of that flower. So that is my finished card project. Now I want to show you the blue one that I did. I showed you the colored pencil that I used for that and here is the blue version. This is done with Blue Lagoon cardstock. And so there are two different color variations of that same card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. And stay tuned to Stamp TV for more card projects featuring the brand new Hearts and Flowers Stamp TV kit available at GinaKDesigns.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.